Welcome to Lecture 5 on the topic of stomata. These are regarded by some as the, long, the lung of the plant. This lecture is part of the plant physiology subject which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology. This degree is offered in partnership with Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. Please visit our website at www.melbournepolytechnic.edu au for further information on this course and other courses that we run. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. As you are familiar by this stage, we are examining this subject as a journey through a plant. In this first stage, we have introduced plant physiology, we have learnt about water movement in the root, where we have also learnt about root structure and function. We have learned about mineral nutrient assimilation and uptake. We have learned about the xylem and how this can move water through the plant. And at this part of the journey, we will learn about the stomata. These are organs based in the leaves. In this lecture, we will follow the, the following topics. Plant water movement and the role of stomata, leaf structure, we will look in detail at stomata structure. We will learn about the interesting stomata mechanism and finish with an overview of the functional role of stomata in plants. Let us just briefly review the process of water movement in the plant. You will be very familiar with water uptake in the roots and now xylem tra transport. In this part of the lecture we will look in more detail on the leaf structure and how water will enter through the leaf structure and travel to the organs called the stomata. The water moves through the, the plant through different water potential gradients. This is a component of what we call the transpirational pool. That is, water is transmitted all the way from the root tips through to the leaves via this pool. It is facilitated by cohesion and adhesion properties of water. In lecture two we learnt about how water enters the root system and in lecture four we learnt about how water travels through the xylem. The movement of this water is called transpiration and we will learn about this in the next lecture, lecture six. So water enters the leaves from the xylem and most of this water is lost out of the stomata to the atmosphere and this is the process we're going to examine in some detail today. The simplified route of water movement through the plant. This image from the BBC Bite Size website demonstrates how water leaves the, the leaf and carbon dioxide enters the leaf. This is the structure of the leaf. The transport vessels, also called the vein, compose of the xylem and the phloem, and we learnt about the xylem in lecture four. They enter into the leaf. You will see that they enter at the lower part of the leaf. The top part has the cuticle. This is then followed by the epi upper epidermis. Under the upper epidermis is the palisade mesophyll cells. This is where the photosynthetic or energy production part of the leaf composes. Underneath is the bundle sheath cells which surround the xylem and the phloem structures. At the bottom of the leaf you have the lower epidermis. This has a waxy cuticle to protect loss of water from the atmosphere in the leaf. It is embedded within the lower epidermis that you will find the stomata, the stomata or organs. Stomata developed a staggering 40 million years ago. This development was pushed as plants left the sea and invaded the land. In order to survive this move, they had to develop features that would prevent excess water loss whilst allowing access to carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis. 
stomata and vascular tissues evolve simultaneously and without these important adaptations, plants living in the terrestrial environment would be significantly challenged. Stomata are pores formed by a pair of cells, the guard cells which open and close to control the exchange between the plant and the environment. These pores are the entry points for carbon dioxide, for photosynthesis and exit of water vapour for transpiration streams. The image on the slide shows a breakdown of the basics of the stomata anatomy. You will firstly note that the stomata are surrounded by epidermal cells. In between the epidermal cells and the stomata pore is the subsidiary cells. These are each stomata is surrounded by two sets of guard cells, one either side of the stomata aperture. The stomata aperture is actually a hole or opening to the environment. The right hand side is some actual stomata images. These were taken at times 400 using the nail polish technique. They are taken from the underside of the leaf. I have labelled the actual image with the anatomical components so that you can see where these lie and what they look like. Unfortunately in this kind of image you will not be able to see the chloroplast but you can see the other structures including the large epidemial cells, the subsidiary cells are quite small, the guard cells which are either side of the stomata aperture. All of these stomata are open as you can visibly see the aperture. So the stomata mechanism is quite simple. Stomata pores have thin inner walls and thick outer walls. The thin inner walls allow the movement of water in and out of the guard cells and this enables stomata to open or to close. The simple video on stomata opening and closing of stomata will give you some visual and basic representation of how this occurs. The mechanism is a little bit more complicated and in-depth than the video suggests but it enables you to get a basic understanding of the operation. The image on the screen shows both open and closed stomata. The open stomata are on the left hand side and the closed stomata on the right hand side. The bottom two images, both on the left and the right, show the movement of water. This is depicted by blue arrows. So as we learnt from the simple video, water is pumped in and out of the guard cells. When the guard cell is turgid or full of water, the stomata are open. When the guard cells do not have much water in them, they are said to be flaccid and are closed. So how does the water get pumped in and out? Well, it is done by a simple potassium opening and closing transport mechanism. Potassium, K plus, is an iron and it is symbolised on the image by some red dots. It moves across the plasma membrane and the vacuole membrane of the stomata pore. This allows a potassium pump, that is potassium and water are exchanged. So the ability to open or close a stoma is due to the relative turgor pressure in the guard cell. Turgor controlled by adding or removing the solutes potassium and water. Water moves in from adjacent cells to result in a build up of pressure in the guard cell. There is a change of shape to the outer guard cell wall. The bowing of the thickened cell wall adjacent to the pore results in a change in structure. There are three solutes involved in the active transport, potassium ions, protons and chlorine. The protons are obtained from water. The sun shining on the guard cell 
causes the ions to be taken up by the guard cell from the surrounding cells. These ions are released to the adjacent cells when the sun goes down. This is of course assuming that no other environmental input overrides this. For example, an extreme water deficit can result in guard cells closing. Ions are taken back up via, in the guard cells via the process of active transport. We were first introduced to active transport in lecture three in the nutrient lecture and the concepts are the same here. Therefore, where an active transport process is involved in any biological activity, it requires energy. So it requires energy to open and close the stomate. It was Leavitt in 1974 who proposed the potassium uptake theory. He came up with this theory after doing some experiments on stomata guard cells. He observed that the protein hydrogen ions up, were uptaken by the guard cells. This in turn changed the pH of the guard cells. Once the guard cells pH has changed, a conversion from the sugar starch into an organic acid, malic acid. With the accumulation of malic acid, further dissociations to form hydrogen plus and malite ion, anion. This results in the uptake of potassium imbalanced by either chlorine or transport of hydrogen ions from the organic acid or by negative changes. This process requires energy. You will note from the earlier anatomy of the guard cells that chloroplasts were, were present. It is from these chloroplasts that the compound ATP adenosine triphosphate is produced. ATP is chemical energy for the plant and this significantly aids the uptake role. So when stomata close, the excretion of the potassium ions from the guard cells into the epidermal and subsidiary cells occurs. Along with potassium being pumped out of the guard cell, water moves out of the guard cells too. Radio orientation occurs in the cellulose microfibrils of the pores. This is required for stomata pore opening. It enables the pore to lengthen when it is being opened, but at the same time prevents it from laterally expanding. A second structural feature of the guard cells is that they are attached to each other via one common wall. This remains constant in length during opening and closing. Both the radial orientation of cellular microfibrils plus the common wall enable the guard cells to open correctly. This opening is called aperture. The stomata aperture is the degree of opening of the stomata. It is a measurement of the efficiency of how stomata is opened or how it is closed. It can be used in agricultural senses to determine how effective a plant is responding to a particular situation or abiotic stress. Its units are measured usually in carbon dioxide or gas over an area over a time. These typically look like micromoles per meter squared per second or it might be measured in moles per meter squared per second. The higher the stomata conductance, or the higher the number, the wider the stomata are open. The wider they're open, the more carbon dioxide they are taking into the plant, but also the more water they are potentially losing through this opening. There are a few ways that you can measure stomata aperture in a plant. The most common is a pyrometer. The image on the slide shows a leaf parameter made by Delta, and this is commonly used in field experiments. Another form of stomatal conductance measurement is by an infrared gas analyzer. A third way that can be also applied is to take photographs. 
very high resolution photographs that enable you to physically see how open or closed each stomata are. This image on the slide is an image of stomata and shows most of the stomata to be closed. That means the guard cells are flaccid. Experimentation has illustrated that light can cause stomata to both open and close. Only a small quantity of light is required in order to open stomata. In fact, moonlight has been observed opening some C3 plant stomata. The time and, and the interaction of stomata and light depends on the, the type of carbon metabolism. Most plants used in agriculture are C3 plants and we will discuss this in further lectures. There is a type of plant called a cam and these stomata open during the dark and re remain closed during the day. This is a water saving strategy. A cactus, for example, could be an example of a cam plant. The concentration of carbon dioxide can influence the opening or closing of stomata. If low CO2 concentrations are detected, either externally or internally, the stomata will open. If high concentrations of CO2 concentration are detected within the plant, the stomata will close. Once the stomata is closed, the external CO2 concentration has no impact. Oxygen is essential for the opening of stomata. The amount of water that is available to a plant can influence stomata opening and closure. When water stress is imposed on a plant, it means that there is less available water and this can cause the plant stomata to close. The mechanism involves the hormone abscisic acid, ABA. When water potential drops in the root, ABA compound is synthesized or made. It is transported from the root system into the leaf. In the leaf, the, the abscisic acid causes the stomata to close. Once the stomata are closed, the water potential in the epidermal cells are lowered. Hormones are the signals that aid in the communication of opening and closing. We've already talked about ABA, which is a signal that comes from the root. Cytokinins can also be a signal from other environmental impacts or abiotic stress, and this can cause opening of stomata. The hormones that we were talking about, ABA and cytokinins, come under the class of hormones called the phytohormones. The figure on your slide is extracted from a paper written in 2013 in the Frontiers in Plant Science. The journal article is called Open or Close the Gate, Stomata Action Under the Control of Phytohormones in Drought Stress Conditions. It reviews the current knowledge about the mechanism and the role that phytohormones play. I do not expect you to learn the complexity of this role. However, I do want you to appreciate and understand that the level that we have been learning in these lectures is good for the subject, but there is more complexity than we have learnt. There is a link in the optional reading section at the end of this lecture if you would like to learn the most up-to-date interaction of phytohormones under drought stress conditions. And finally, we will look at temperature. Temperature is probably the most impacting environmental influence on stomata. As the temperature increases, stomata aperture tends to increase, resulting in stomata being more open. As the temperature decreases, stomata will close. In experimentation, it has been observed that when temperatures of the plant get up to 38 to 40 degrees C, stomata will open even in the dark. This evidence indicates that some environmental factors are more dominant than others. There has been some new evidence gained in 2012 published in the PNAS 
about the stomata regulation. It talks about how important heat is as a driver of guard cells and hence stomata aperture. Please stop the video here and watch the video Plant Breathing Mechanisms Discovered. Please insert notes from the main take home messages from this video here. The major function of a stomata is to allow sufficient carbon dioxide to enter the leaf which allows optimization of the process of photosynthesis. While this is occurring, the stomata's role is also to conserve as much water as possible. This is known as the transpirational compromise. Stomata has a second function, which can operate under some environmental conditions. Evaporative cooling of the leaf by water loss via transpiration may be a factor in lowering the leaf temperature. Like your evaporative cooling, the temperature and the humidity have to be optimal for this process to occur. We started this lecture by asking, are the stomatas the lungs of the plant? Well, I think that you will agree that their functional roles are very similar to our lungs. The essential reading for this topic includes Components of Chapter 4 from the Taze and Zeiger 2010 Plant Physiology Recommended Course Textbook. There are three sections. The first is on stomata control. This is followed by radial orientation. And the third section I'd like you to read is the course of stomata opening. The second article is found on the web. It is the story of stomata. It outlines stomata evolution and why that's important in modern day agriculture. The third reading on the screen is optional and it is if you want to advance your understanding of how phytohormones and drought control stomata. In this paper are quite complex themes that are presented and we do not need to know this to complete this subject but understanding that there is a level of complexity in this mechanism is important. So let us summarise what we have learnt in this lecture. You should now be able to list the important functions of the stomata, both the principal and the secondary functions. You should be able to draw and understand the structural makeup of each stomata and how the anatomy and the structure play a role in the stomatal function. You should understand how the complex balance of solutes and energy enable stomata function. We also briefly looked at how environment can influence stomata. That brings us to the end of this lecture.